I read a book by a native elder named Sun Bear and uh, inspired me to go and learn some of the wisdom that Sun Bear was sharing. I had the opportunity to participate in some ceremonies and one of the ceremonies was called a vision quest. A teenager coming into adulthood would seek their life's path. It was during this vision quest that a bee came to me. I looked down and this bee was sitting there on my foot and I hadn't even heard it come or felt it land or anything. And um, the native approach is to be open to everything in nature, as uh, they believe everything has something to teach us. And so in trying to keep with the spirit of that, I was open to the bee and kind of said, you know, what do you have to teach me? And the bee started flying around me and landing on various parts of my body and uh, for, kept this up for several minutes uh, before it flew off. And the next day I was sitting in the same spot and a bee came along and I heard bzzz, bzzz, and it flew off, kept going as if I was, it was flying in a bee line and I, my head was in the way. About six months later, I was offered a job with Bill and Charlie Mraz, local beekeepers, very well known, and um, spent six years learning from them uh, who combined, Bill and Charlie had over a hundred years of beekeeping experience. So it was just a wonderful education for me. And that gave me the basis for going off and starting my own beekeeping business. I have about 40 to 50 hives. In the spring, there's a local apple orchard that I bring some hives in for the pollination. Then throughout the season, I'm gonna be maintaining my hives to keep them healthy, mostly for honey production and I make my own nucleus colonies which are splits so I can increase the numbers and use the hives that have survived the winter here in this uh, locality so I know that they're adapted to my region. There's one harvest typically in mid to late August and that's the harvest for the season. Each one of these stacks of boxes is a beehive and the Lower boxes, especially the deeper one, tends to house the brood nest where the queen will lay the eggs and the young bees are raised and that's where they hatch. And then above the brood nest is typically where the bees will store their pollen and the honey. As long as the bees have room in the hive and there are blossoms to gather nectar from, the bees will continue to gather nectar and make honey, as long as there's room in the colony to store it. And so as the bees fill up these boxes, uh, the beekeeper will add additional boxes to the hive to give them more room. So they'll keep filling them up throughout the season until you get to the end of the season and there's no more blossoms and that's when you would want to have the harvest completed. Honey bees are meant to eat honey. so. I prefer to feed honey in the comb. In a good year, a hive could make 100, 125, 150 pounds, but then of course there are other years when bees may not make any honey and you'll end up having to feed them in order to make sure they don't starve through the winter. There are many things that beekeepers do that can compromise the immune system of the honeybee. Feeding them artificial diets of sugar water or artificial pollen patties, using various chemicals in the hive to combat mites, moving them long distances for pollination is very stressful. The use of antibiotics in the hive can weaken the immune systems of the bees. My approach is to use honey whenever possible to feed the bees. I don't use antibiotics to control disease. I think part of it is just an attitude towards the bees. Um, not treating them like an industrial cog in a machine that's a producing honey, just looking to produce production at all costs, but rather uh, treating them as the living biological organism that they are.